orders were at overseas shipment and through Fort Meade and we went overseas. I served with the 87th Infantry Division. Infantry platoon leaders, which I was, they are very, uh, they're very poor risk. Well, I could talk, I could give you a lot of different little vignettes of what happened in my career, but uh, uh, the, the liberation of Buchenwald was one of the highlights. Today, probably some people don't believe it ever happened, but uh, I'll never, never forget that. Never. It was horrible, horrible. Last part of April of 1945. I never forgot that. I remember one particular inmate there. Uh, they, hung, they took the sheet off from his body and he was naked from the waist on up and you could count all of his ribs and his cheeks were hollowed and he looked awful. He was young, 19 years old and he was like a political prisoner. His father had been in politics in Austria and uh, I don't think he was a Jew, but in any event he was an intern there at uh, Buchenwald. I wanted to feed him. But we were told, don't feed them because you'll kill them. Because they've been on starvation diet you know, for a while. And I understand he died a couple of days after I was talking to him. But he was a bright boy. He was about, I think, 19 years old. These are the ovens that they would put the steel stretcher in, burn the bodies, and then the ashes would go in these urns. And I saw in jars the human body parts in formaldehyde or something. And they also made lampshades out of human skin. We saw that and we talked to some of the inmates and some of the inmates had seen uh, how these lampshades were made. To see those people who had done nothing wrong, mostly because they were Jewish, but not always, sometimes they're just pure political prisoners. And it's amazing that what they went through and some of them survived. And many of them of course died. <laughs> 